Hello and welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries. It is a thinking kind of day because like all big jobs, when you start the job, the first thing you start is thinking about it. So the next job and one of the few remaining jobs now is the electrics of this uh, great machine here. Uh, and the first thing, of course, it starts with the power supply or the power source, which is going to go in there between the two chains in this area. So... Um, I've measured up and I know how much space I've got sort of volume wise and I've selected a pair of batteries. I'm going to go for lithium polymer batteries. They haven't arrived yet, um, but they are on order and I'm reliably informed they're on their way to me. So the, va the vendor of the battery was very, very helpful. The two batteries I've gone for are 480 cold cranking amps each so i've got a couple of options they, they did suggest why don't you just put one bigger battery in instead of instead of two small batteries but if i do that then i'm limited to 12 volts if i have two batteries i can wire them in parallel which gives me close on in theory a uh, thousand cold, cold cranking amps uh, which this poor little starter motor won't know what's hit it. Um, or I can wire them in series and then get 24 volts. But as you've seen from previous videos, the electronic ignition wasn't so happy about that. So that's the first thing. Batteries are on order and I've selected them. Uh, I've pressed the button uh, on ordering them. Uh, when they arrive, I'll wire everything up away from the bike, test it before I fit it all in nice and neatly. And obviously I need to make some mechanism, some carrier here to carry the batteries and make a choice as to whether I have to remove the tank to get the batteries out and come in from the top or whether I'm going to lean the bike over and come up from the bottom with the batteries. And I'm, I'm preferring the bottom option because it might be a bit of a, a faff to get the tank off, but only time will tell. So I've also taken the seat off because part of the wire Wiring involves wiring the fuel pump and the fuel pump that I've purchased is quite it's quite um, a length it's got this uh, inbuilt filter which is a changeable filter so it filters the fuel before it goes into the pump which is a jolly good idea and I might even put a filter on the, the north side of the pump before it goes up into the carb but there isn't an awful lot of room for that in there so I need to think about how I'm going to fabricate the mount for it um, that allows the fuel to come out of here into this pipe and up there and from the, the bottom end I'm not quite sure you can see but where it comes out of the tank on the tap there it's got to get to uh, the bottom of the, the pump here so there's a, a bit of thinking about how I'm going to do that uh, I'm probably going to put a plate across here when it's finished uh, maybe attach that to the underside of the plate or something um, uh, and then that that would look a little bit neater and then pop the seat back on but electrics well there's a few things to accommodate in the electrics they're over on the bench i'm just going to teleport to the bench here we go right so here we are on the bench we've got the electronic ignition unit we've got the regulator for the dynamo output to make sure we don't over voltage those super nice expensive uh, lithium batteries uh, there's going to be a couple of relays no doubt for headlights and other things perhaps these are universal pre-wired relay uh, holders so for an indication of size i need to get that in some kind of electrics box i need to get that in i need to get something one or two of those perhaps and then maybe a fuse few fuses i like these fuse holders yeah they're modular so you can click them together so if you need to wire in another circuit you can click this onto there and make a four five six and so on fuse holder and then when you've finished uh, that this piece clips onto the very end and allows you to bolt it or screw it to the side of your electrics box so you get quite a nice fuse holder and then you can put these little plastic covers on the top and then when you're done so that would look quite neat in a box uh, i won't have a relay that big because the starter solenoid is part of the um, starter motor itself um, but just as a, i had it lying around from an old car so just just a handful of things that might need to go in some kind of electrics box now I had a route around the house and uh, I found this box, which isn't a bad size. I'm not planning to use this. Oh, just um, move that out of the way. Don't get it too oily or I'll get moaned at. Uh, just as an indication of size, um, this tea box here uh, is probably a good size because while the electronic ignition could go in there, 
uh, there's plenty of room for fuses and other things around it now this looks like it's potted in with the resin it looks like it probably is waterproof i'll have to read the instructions and it is designed to go on a motorbike so um, I would imagine we could potentially put that not inside the electrics box, as is this re uh, regulator unit. It's definitely a sealed unit. Uh, it looks like it's almost designed to go outside. So I might fit that outside the bike. I might just drop that inside the uh the the tin not this tin but the battery box i end up making with a bit of foam cut out uh, and it should all look quite nice so where is it all going to go well where's we we're running a little bit out of space looking inside the bike there's a potential for this regulator to go on the outside of the bike in there and i think that that would look quite neat uh, it's not far from the output of the dynamo here so the output wires from the dynamo could come straight down here to the regulator and then the output of that could go underneath here into the batteries so that's probably where that's going to go on the outside but i will double check with the manufacturers that it is rated for outdoor use although down there it shouldn't see too much rain because it's protected by by the engine and uh, and everything else uh, and then and then the box itself well that fits quite nicely just about here if i teleport around to the other side of the bike and try and remember how i got that yeah that fits that fits in between the engine plates down there uh, and there's a bit of a bit of space there as well so potentially electric box could go in there something like that um there's there's potential to make it a little bit longer but perhaps i'll put a bit of a curve on it here so it's not um not just a square box and if i come back around the other side it's tucked in there relatively nicely i think uh other option will be to, to move it slightly higher um yeah so that's that's kind of what I'm thinking at the moment. At least I can fabricate a bit of a box while I wait for the batteries. Uh, I'm still in the process of drawing up a wiring diagram, but I don't think it's going to be too difficult to accommodate those components because there's not an awful lot to fit there. But there isn't much room around here. I did think about perhaps using this space here for an electrics box. Not quite sure how that would look. Um, the other side, of course, has got the, the brake assembly sort of in the way. Um, whether I could fit an actual box in there to, to give us a bit more space, it doesn't... Hmm. Yeah, just needs a bit of thinking. So as I say, it's a thinking kind of day, not making any rash decisions, not rushing off to fabricate anything at the moment, just having a good old think. And that quite often is very important. So when we have some decisions, I will post them on the online and you'll be able to see what's happening next. Uh, that's it. Nothing else has happened. Uh, perhaps I'm going to go have a few drinks and maybe that will aid the decision process. And let's face it, that's how we got here in the first place. Right. That's it for today. As usual, thank you for watching. More updates will follow.